Now, the government is failing to prevent talented and experienced women from leaving the workforce because of a lack of support for those going through the menopause. Yeah, that is according to campaigners who've been giving evidence to the Women and Equalities Committee this afternoon. And they also discussed drug shortages and the cost of HRT prescriptions. And joining us uh, from Westminster to talk about that meeting is the chair of the menopause mandate, broadcaster Mariella Frostrop. Uh, she's also joined uh, by the chair of menopause uh, whilst black, Karen Arthur. Uh, good evening to you both. You have just come out of that committee meeting. Mariella, how did it go? Well, it was um, quite an incongruous uh, get-together. If you imagine, there was a huge portrait above us uh, of a parliament full of men. It just highlights why probably we're in the situation that we are today. And it was just fantastic for you know for, to be hosted by Caroline Noakes and um, Carolyn Harris to discuss a, a topic that really should be at the top of all of our lists. You know, I mean, if you look at the, the sort of brain drain over 50, the government were talking only a month or so ago, the Treasury, about wanting to get more people over 50 back in work. But if you aren't actually looking after uh, the people over 50 who are in work and struggling, uh, then you really aren't kind of living up to your responsibilities. So, I mean, it was it was really fascinating. It was a very broad conversation. Mm. We talked about every single aspect of it. What do you think, Karen? Do you think it went well? Yeah, I think it was brilliant. I, I don't think they knew what was coming, really. I mean, <laughs> we all we didn't hold back. I think it was really important for everybody to feel heard. I mean, I was representing my community and we talked about, you know, the cultural nuances of menopause, but also about making sure that everybody, however they decide to access menopause care, can access it um, freely and, you know, and for everybody as well. So, um, yeah, it went well. I think what was, what was um, you know, most disturbing about it was that actually when you sit in a room and, and you have, you know, four people presenting their evidence, you realise that almost everything about the system around menopause is rotten, yeah. you know. And the fact that the uh, government minister, Maria Caulfield, couldn't actually find time in her diary to turn up to the invitation from the committee, I think speaks volumes for the fact that there's a lot of menno washing uh, going on at the moment. Uh, the government seems to have appropriated the idea that um, talking about women's health is a good vote winner. But when it comes to actually putting any policies into place, there's been nothing uh, forthcoming. They've turned down nearly all of the committee's recommendations. Um, and so women in the workplace aren't protected by the law. They're not protected by a mandatory rolled out um, you know system um, and they continue to struggle with symptoms of menopause without being able to get proper medical help either so all in all it's like a sort of triple whammy if you yeah. will Carol Vorderman yeah. at the table there with you as well we just saw I mean who would argue with her Karen, no, um, I don't really a... want nobody, frankly, <laughs> certainly not Karen. And I, to be um, the Karen, Karen, on a personal note, I mean, this is something you've campaigned for, as as has Mariella, but on a personal note, this is something you've been campaigning for for years, isn't it? Um, I, yeah, I guess. I mean, I have been, I just host, I just, I host a podcast called Menopause Was Black. And that was brought about because I wanted to share a black Brit's experience of menopause. And I wanted to also make sure that we were represented in the talk and, and you know, and, and make sure that people of colour were being heard. And so, yes, it's been a long time coming. I think we're still at the vanguard. You know, I, I think we're still at the very beginning very beginning i think we've got a long way to go in terms of making sure that everybody who experiences menopause accessing accesses menopause care that they deserve but it is certainly a start and we're not letting go i think the imperative thing really uh today was you know you, you're looking at four very strong women there, Kate Muir, <laughs> Carol Vorderman, Karen and myself um but we don't want it to be a situation where only women who have um you know, voices that they're prepared to use and are confident to use can be heard. You know, there are a lot of women out there. There are black women, women of colour, South Asian women. There are working class women who... And, and there are so many people out there who don't feel that they have the confidence or the right yeah. to make their voices heard. And, and you know, that's very much, I think, the biggest problem here is that it's OK for a bunch of us. Yeah. Um, you know, as I said today, you need to be a bit of a bully to get yourself heard when it comes to, to menopause. And if if you're not, then you end up still very much the victim of uh, circumstances which are just not good enough in the 21st century. Yeah. Uh, well, it's very rare I say this, but Mariella and Karen, but continue bullying and yeah, continue <laughs> fighting <laughs> for, for everything you're fighting for. So good talking to you both. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.